Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and in this tutorial we're going to be covering how to build out some simple microservices on top of Encore.dev and we're going to be showing you how you can accelerate your Go development using this amazing tool. Now before we get into it, I should point out that this is a sponsored video and the creators of Encore.dev have reached out to me to produce this content. Now, if you want to follow along, you can certainly do so. You can get started for free if you head over to Encore.dev and sign up for an account. Cool. So let's dive into Visual Studio Code and let's get cracking. Now, the very first thing I'm going to do is to install the Encore Dev CLI. And I'm going to jump into the terminal and type brew install Encore Dev slash tap slash Encore, like so. Now that's going to go and install the CLI on my local machine for me and we'll come back once that's finished. Perfect. This is now installed. And just to note, if you're running on Windows or Linux, you can check out the install instructions in the description below. Alrighty, let's create a new app. So let's do Encore app create. And let's press enter. That's going to attempt to auth with the browser, which it has done. So let's create an app and we'll say tutorial edge YouTube. Ah, okay, let's try tutorial edge YouTube, lowercase. And let's use the hello world just to get us started. Cool, so you'll see that took no time at all. And if we CD into our newly created project, we can then do something like Encore, Encore, run. And that's going to start up my app locally for me. Cool, and that has done. And you can see that it's started on localhost port 4000. And it's given me a hint. I can try and curl the endpoint that's exposed here. So let's create another terminal, or let's split this terminal. And let's curl. And as you can see, I've been able to successfully hit the hello world endpoint that is exposed within this application. Cool, so in just a few commands, we've been able to scaffold or bootstrap our project. And let's dive into exactly what's been created for us. Well, we can see that we have a hello directory at the root of our project. And within this, we have the hello.go file. And in here, we have our API definition. Now we've called it world, and the way we've exposed this is using the annotations just above our function signature here. Now you can see in here, we've been able to parameterize the path and then pass this in as an argument. And then we're able to define the response and the message that we want to send back. In this case, it's just message and hello world. Let's try and change that. So hello to the wonderful person and we'll take in the name. So let's save that. You'll see it's going to automatically detect the changes and recompile. And then let's curl and let's say hello, Elliot. Of course, I spelled my name wrong. However, we can still see that the message is printed out and we've got instant feedback. So a really quick, nice feedback loop for when we're developing out our applications. Now, let's say we wanted to define a new endpoint. Let's do that now. We'll do Encore colon API. We'll say it's a public endpoint. We'll say the path is equal to say task for instance. And we'll say a new task. And let's take in context, context.context. .context. And let's do pointer to a response and error. So let's do return at ampersand response message a uh, new task has been created and nil for the error. So let's save that. Once again, it's gonna detect the changes and recompile. And we can try curling this new endpoint task. So a new task has been created. So hopefully this gives you a really quick indication as to how powerful this product is in terms of accelerating your Go development. Okay, so we've got our first two 
endpoints within our first microservice up and running. Let's take a look at creating a second microservice. And in order to do that, we're going to have to create another directory. And let's call this the task directory. Now within here, we're going to say task.go and package task just to get us started. Okay, so in the real world, we tend to use queues and the PubSub model in between our microservices to help simplify the communication. Now, this is where Encore.dev really shines and it allows us to declaratively define new infrastructure to suit our needs. Now, let's attempt to define a new topic. And in order to do that, we can do the following. So let's do task event struct. We'll give it a name, which will be string. And let's do the following. So let's say var tasks is equal to pub sub dot new topic. And we want this to be a task event, a pointer to task event. We'll call it tasks. And we'll define the pub sub dot topic config like so and let's define the delivery guarantee so delivery guarantee and let's do pub sub dot at least once cool now in order for this to work we're going to have to import encore dot dev slash pub sub and that should be as good to go. Okay, so let's open up the hello.go file alongside us. We'll steal the task API endpoint that we had before, copy that in here, and let's remove the response. So it's just going to return an error if there has been one. Da, 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 bit delete. And let's also add a path parameter. So let's do name in here. We'll pass this in as name string. And then within the body of this function, we want to publish an event to our tasks topic. Now we can do that by the following. So let's do if underscore error is equal to tasks dot publish. It'll take in the context and then the task event. We'll pass in the name is equal to the name parameter. And then we're going to check the error. So if error does not equal nil, we then want to return an error like so. Cool. So let's test that out in anger. Let's open up the second terminal on the right here. And let's try and curl this endpoint once again. So let's do task Elliot. And if everything has gone correctly or to plan, we should see that it has been successful in publishing to this new tasks topic. Okay, so we've got it so that whenever we hit this endpoint, it will publish to our tasks topic that we have defined up here. Now, let's say we wanted to consume the messages posted to that topic queue. Well, let's do the following. Let's open up the hello service and we want to define a new subscription. So let's do var underscore is equal to pub sub dot new subscription. We'll take in the tasks dot tasks topic and we'll say consume task and let's set up the pub sub dot subscription config. This is going to take in a pointer to task dot task event and we want to define the handler. So the handler is going to be, let's say, send hello email, like so. Da, 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 da. That's going to complain because we need the encore.dev slash pub sub. And we also need encore.app slash task, which is the task directory or package we've got here. And this also needs to be task.tasks. Perfect. So it's now just complaining that we don't have send hello email defined. Let's fix that now. Let's create another function just down below. 
we'll take in context, context.context, the event that we want to consume, which will be task.task .task event, and the error. So it might return an error if it's not been able to consume it properly or send the email, you know, whatever. Now in this example, we're going to keep it nice and simple. We're simply going to consume the task event. So let's do FMT print line. And just so we can see it, a couple of equals. And let's change the middle one to FMT F or print F. Let's do percentage plus V slash N and the event. And then let's return it nil. Now we'll save that and it should automatically import the FMT package or the format package at the top. And you can see everything has successfully compiled. Now let's open up the right hand terminal and try and curl our task endpoint. Now passing in the name, it should then publish this to the tasks topic. And then our expectation is that the hello microservice that we have here will then consume from that topic and hopefully send a hello email. So let's try this out now. And as you can see, we've been able to successfully hit this endpoint. And you can see in the logs that we've been able to consume from this tasks topic. Very cool. Okay, so that's all the code we're going to cover. Now let's just quickly recap what we've been able to achieve here. Well, we've set up two services within our Encore application, and these services communicate via a queue, so a PubSub queue. Now, we've been able to define the queue with just a declarative statement here on lines 11 to 13. And then within the hello topic, or the hello.go file, I should say, we've been able to set up a new subscription to this queue and easily consume any messages sent to that queue. Now that's not all. Let's have a look at the dashboard that comes with all Encore apps. Now, in order to view this, I've navigated to localhost port 4000, and it's automatically redirected me to the development dashboard that you'll see in front of you. Now we can have a look around this dashboard. We can see some of the traces. So we can see that task consume task was called. We can see how long it's taken. We can see database queries, the message ID and delivery attempts. And we can see the message that was published. And let's see what else we can see. We can see the API request that published to that queue. And we can call the API should we wish. So let's do task new task. Request completed successfully. And again, you can see the endpoints or the, the traces for the task consumption and the call to the endpoint here. Cool, now the other really cool thing is if we click on this flow, we can see exactly how our two services communicate. You can see that the task has one public API endpoint. It publishes to our task topic and we have one subscriber, which is our hello service. Now this visualization is freaking awesome. I honestly wish I had this in more of my setups and my production environments. Just having this really allows me to see exactly how data is flowing through my services and my systems. Cool. So we've got all this running locally. The next question is how do we get this up and into the cloud somewhere for us to call? In order to do that, let's do the following first. So let's go into our hello underscore test .go. And as we've changed behavior here, let's change or let's remove the test for now. And let's also add task underscore test dot go as a placeholder. This will be package test and func test task. Take in t testing dot t and we'll leave it as an empty test for now. And let's ensure that we remember our imports. Cool. So with that in place, let's navigate down into the terminal and let's attempt to push this up to Encore Cloud. So with these in place, let's do git add dash uppercase A, git commit, initial commit, and git 
push encore. Cool. So now that we've pushed the app up to Encore Cloud, we should be able to navigate to the dashboard and we should be able to see our application. And in there, we should be able to see the status of our deploy. Now, as you can see, my deploy has just finished. The initialize, build and test pipeline that we have for the deploy here has all passed. And I should now be able to go back into my overview and I have a URL that I can now hit. Cool, so let's take this URL, let's add it to the taskbar and let's do task slash Elliot. And hopefully this will create a new task within our system. And as you can see, the response is null. But however, if we go back into the overview and into traces, we should see that a new task has been submitted and that we've been able to consume the task from the queue that it was published to. And if we click on one of these things, Let's say we click on this. We should see the request, which was name as Elliot, the response, how long it took, how many DB queries, and what it did. So it published to the queue. Let's go back to the other one, tasks consume task. You can see that it consumed the message from the queue, which had name as Elliot, and it basically did nothing with it. Perfect. So in this tutorial, we've been able to successfully deploy our application up to the cloud been able to define two microservices within our application, one of which takes in API calls and submits something to a queue, and then the other which consumes from said queue. Now, I know a lot of you out there will be apprehensive about allowing another company to manage your critical infrastructure within your applications. However, Encore allows you to use your own infrastructure within your own AWS or GCP account and it will simply manage all of the overhead of doing things like deploying the app and all of the things that you don't necessarily care about as developers. You simply want to get out the business value to your customers as opposed to managing this sort of infrastructure. Cool, so that's all we're gonna cover within this tutorial. It's been quite a ride. We're at about 18 minutes now of recording time, but hopefully in these 18 minutes, I've been able to show you or demonstrate to you the power of Encore and how it can help accelerate your Go development. Now, just remember, this is all completely free. If you want to try this at home, you certainly can. And if you want to get some more involved support, you can certainly upgrade your account to the more premium levels. Cool. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Please leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you want some more Go programming content. Cheers.